Joe Kinzer joins us this morning. He is uh, an assistant, uh, the uh, chief assistant. Of what they, I guess they used to call you chief, right? Yeah, uh, senior assistant. Senior assistant now yeah. in the Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. You heard in the intro there, Katie wilkes delegate last week announcing on the program that she will run for judge, Joe, which leaves a, uh, a door open in the office. It does, a pretty big door um, with big shoes to fill. But thank you for having me this morning. Uh, I wanted to come on and uh, officially announce that I'm going to be running to be the next Berkeley County prosecutor in 2024. So uh, I'm currently, like you said, the, the senior assistant. I'm uh, the number two guy in the office, and uh, I aim to be the number one. Um, I have been in this office for a very long time, uh, about eight years. Uh, I know what it takes to do the job and do the job well. Um, and I really look forward to continuing to serve Berkeley County in that role if I'm elected. Joe, give us the Joe Kinzer resume. Sure. So uh, I've devoted my entire legal career to public service. Um, I started as a public defender here in Martinsburg. Uh, and after a few years of that, uh, I was hired as an assistant prosecuting attorney in Berkeley. And my first docket was the child abuse and neglect docket, which is uh, really important uh, but tough work to do in this county and the numbers in those kind of cases have skyrocketed. Um, but during my time as an assistant, and, and I was hired under the previous administration, so I was, I was there in the office when Katie came in. And um, under this administration, I've done, I've, I've been given the responsibility of some of the biggest, toughest, and most complex criminal cases in Berkeley County. Can you give us an example? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I'm unfortunately have uh, been, have prosecuted multiple um, mothers who have killed their children, um, which are the cases that just uh, they break you. They are tough. Um, they're hard to go through and they're so important. They're so important and they're so important to get right. Um, so are, in my opinion, uh, child sexual assault cases. I've handled plenty of those. Uh, and I have a real passion for that and trying to fight for children and stand up for children. But I think if, if I were to look at what my, my career case has been as an assistant prosecutor, it's the uh, 2014 murder of Taylor Hockridge, who was a young mother who was gunned down in front of her home in uh, Berkeley County. And that investigation was uh, it took a long time we originally were just able to uh, identify the driver of the getaway car that's the only person we could identify and we went forward on that and we prosecuted and convicted her it was a female um, that was in I want to say 2017 uh, but we didn't stop after that uh, I worked with the uh, Eastern Panhandle Drug and Violent Crimes Task Force we uh, utilized uh, some resources from Homeland Security and we kept digging and kept digging and uh, ended up finding the murder weapon, ended up finding additional witnesses. And ultimately last year, we were able to bring the other two parties involved in the murder to trial and we obtained convictions and, and they both received life without mercy. So they're never getting out of prison. And that was directly a result of us working together, um, me and the task force uh, and federal authorities um, and we, we had some amazing experts in that case. Uh, actually, the FBI cast agent, uh, those are the folks, if you don't know, that do all the cell phone tower extrapolation. You know, they'll get your cell phone records and they'll be able to say, you were over here, you were over there at this time and that time. Uh, the witness that we used for that testified in the uh, Murdoch trial down in South Carolina as well. He's like the, the best that the FBI has. And we had the pleasure of using him in both our 2017 trial and the, uh, the trial last year. So it's, um, that, that's probably the case that I'm most proud of because the result that we got and we just didn't stop, just kept digging and got to, uh, got to justice. Sounds like a John Gilstrap novel. It kind of does actually. Right? <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, it's all the moving parts. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what is the, the prosecutor's role, ongoing investigation? Mm -hmm. um, obviously there's a lot of police work, whether it's federal police or <clears throat> Excuse me. What is the prosecutor's role in driving the investigation as opposed to the prosecution? Sure. Um, well, that's something that I care about a lot because it's not, um, you know, a, a lot of times officers will investigate a case and they'll bring it to you 
and they'll charge it and it's here's your case and this is what it is and you work with it and that that's well and good and that can lead to fine outcomes but in my experience when the prosecutor is actively involved on the front end and that's that's something I can bring to the table as the prosecutor because I've spent years building these relationships with these investigators, this trust, you know, that, that they feel comfortable calling me during an investigation and working together. Um, I think when you do that and the prosecutor works on the front end, which, by the way, is how the feds do it. I mean, the uh, United States Attorney's Office, they participate in investigations with the FBI from the jump. And it leads to better results. And in my experience, it continues to lead to better results. So that's that's something I certainly want to focus on if I'm the next prosecutor is more front end prosecution involvement in big cases and investigations. Billy. Okay. Uh, good morning, Joe. Good to good to meet you. Good morning. Uh, you, I mentioned a while ago um, uh, you've had the opportunity or at least the uh, the unhappiness uh, unhappy experience of prosecuting mothers that kill their children. Are these young children or middle-aged children? Is there a pattern that can be found? We, we did not hear very often of a mother killing a child. Uh, it, it was not. Um, it was not a, a pattern. I, I, I think it's um, they're rare that they happen, mm -hmm. and, and we were really unfortunate to have two um, within a couple years of each other here. But these were these were young children, um, and uh, just uh, terrible crimes. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Joe, um, uh, you say you've been in the office for eight years uh, uh, and you've developed a working relationship with the law enforcement side. I assume you've also built up a relationship with the other county officials, the other elected county officials. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, and in that time, uh, you know, another thing that I've done is, is created a reputation for myself among the bar, among, you know, and the bench as well. I think I'm respected by the judges in the circuit um, and the other defense attorneys. Um, and not just elected officials, but the people behind the scenes that I think sometimes the public doesn't know just how much we rely upon. Um, like the folks over at the Victoria's House Child Advocacy Center, you know, uh, the work that they do, we meet, I've, I've been the representative for the prosecutor's office at the, we call it the MDIT. It's the multidisciplinary investigative team. We meet once a month in Berkeley County, and we review all cases uh, that involve child victims from the beginning. So you talked about you know prosecutor involvement. We're already involved on the front end in cases involving kids by this multidisciplinary investigative team. There's forensic nurses there from City Hospital, Winchester, uh, Internet Crimes Against Children folks from the state police who are just rock stars. They're there. Um, sheriff's deputies uh, who are in the CID, the Criminal Investigations Division, and Martinsburg detectives. And we all meet once a month and we, so that we can stay on top of cases involving children um, and not let any slip through the cracks. And that has led to better results. And better results from a prosecutorial standpoint mean a safer Berkeley County. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, Katie Delegati uh, has received credit on a lot of fronts. She's done a marvelous job, but one of which was that she's been able to work well, exceptionally well, with all the other county elected officials, most yes. notably the county council, county commission. And yes. Like. And that was my point. I guess mm -hmm. you still have this. You know these folks and have worked with them. Yes, I work with them, and, and we have a well-established uh, relationship, and, and I think they know what I'm about. Um, and we work well together, absolutely. And that directly benefits the office, which, again, yeah. I think directly leads to a safer Berkeley County. Joe sure. Kinzer is our guest. You just reintroduced Joe. For those just tuning in here, he is the uh, candidate, it would seem now, for the position that Katie wilkes Delegetti will be uh, uh, vacating as she decides to run for judge. Joe would like to be the next Berkeley County prosecuting attorney, currently works as the senior assistant in the office. Uh, Bill? Yeah, uh, Joe, a, a couple, three years ago, uh, the county council uh, put an ordinance that said if you were a county employee, uh, you could not run for an elected office. Yes. Uh, I'm, we're the only county that has that. I have been told uh, the judges feel that if it ever was in front of a court, it'd be thrown out. Uh, 
it's uh, un, and I don't really know. I think I do know why they put it in effect, uh, but it would discourage individuals such as yourself from running for office because you'd have to basically retire. You'd, you'd have to quit your job in order to run for office. Uh, yes. Would you speak to that, please? Absolutely. Uh, you are correct. I'm, I'm not aware of any other county that has that rule, but we do. And the way that is supposed to work is um, in January of next year, when I officially you know, file my papers in my candidacy, uh, I'm supposed to, under the rule, immediately resign. And um, I also agree with what some of the judges have mentioned about, you know, the viability of that rule. Um, but the bottom line is just because I don't like a rule doesn't mean I, I don't have to follow it. And if that rule is in place in January of next year, um, I'll do what I have to do. I think it would be kind of a ridiculous outcome, and it, I think it would hurt Berkeley County um, if I have to walk away. Although my good friend Matt Harvey over in Jefferson, I think he's still down a prosecutor. I don't know, maybe I, he could borrow me for a year while I'm uh, finishing up the He'll campaign. He'll be in Thursday, Joe. We can ask him. <laughs> well, I think, I think he'd, he'd like me. I, I am able to say that, uh, uh, speaking with Matt, and I know Matt very well, that he uh, both supports and endorses my, my campaign for prosecutor in Berkeley mm -hmm. County, Excellent. Uh, as does our neighbor uh, on the other direction, Dan James, the prosecutor in Morgan County. Uh, I'm I'm able to say that he both supports and endorses my campaign for prosecutor here in Berkeley. Joe, do you know, and this may not be your field of expertise here, but we do get questions, is is the is Dan still conducting the investigation into Sheriff Harmon? Yes, that's my understanding. Um, it is my understanding that he is in charge of that investigation and is uh, still proceeding. Any idea when that might wrap up or there might be any news? No, I don't. You know, I Dan and I discuss... Uh, various cases at times and um you know I, when i started as a public defender dan was the assistant prosecutor up in morgan county and so we were in magistrate court all the time and we we worked together a lot up there and we still talk uh but i i don't ask him about that i don't inquire due to you know sure you know, the sheriff being my sheriff here at berkeley under katie wilkes delegate uh, as, as she uh, has been the prosecuting attorney while this has really taken off the day report center huh has uh, become the example around the state and yes. has saved Berkeley County's prison bill uh, in the millions now yes. over the years. Uh, will you continue to uh, keep a similar attitude toward the Day Report Center as Katie has established? Absolutely. Our Day Report Center is fantastic. And, and it's not just the Day Report Center, but having a separate home confinement office with designated home confinement officers uh, helps the jail bill as well. But if you think about it, from the time when I started as a prosecutor, as an assistant, drug court juvenile drug court none of those were a thing um the day report center didn't exist uh, home confinement was run by the sheriff's office and didn't have designated officers to do that uh, and we didn't have mountaineer recovery center we had none of those resources and i've been able uh, to see especially during katie's tenure as the prosecutor those services become available which are sorely needed one to help out the the addicted population um because we do have that and we have to address it um, but also that jail bill, because it's expensive uh, to house people at the Eastern Regional Jail. Is it possible that if there is a different prosecuting attorney elected in the next election, that and they have a different attitude toward the Day Report Center and all the other facilities you just mentioned that are influenced by pr prosecutorial decisions by the mm -hmm. prosecutor's office, is it possible that those facilities would be adversely affected by a prosecuting attorney with a different attitude toward them. Absolutely. I think that those, um, they, they would be adversely affected, as would the county in general. Um, if we're, the Eastern Regional Jail, I know you all have discussed it on the, on the radio a couple times, the state of that place. Um, we need to maximize and take full advantage of these services that we're fortunate enough to have in Berkeley County, uh, specifically day report and home confinement. Um, I think if someone else came in, uh, there would be a real danger of not utilizing them to the extent that we do now. John Gilstrap. So, John, I, what I'm sensing in this conversation, <clears throat> you've everything seems to be on the right track now yes. in Berkeley County. So now you're making the transition from, as I understand it, from a career prosecutor to the political side of things. So in terms of a platform, are there things you want to change or are you standing pretty much for keeping the, the train on the same track? Sure, it's a little bit of both. There are some small things that I would like to change, but I, I think basically I look at it as I want to build on what Katie has been doing and, and what 
I mean, for the last several years that I've been helping her with. I mean, these I'm very much been involved in a lot of the decisions um, moving forward. Katie and I work well together and uh, I'm going to miss her terribly uh, as a boss and as a colleague. Um, but, you know, some of the small things that I would like to change, I mentioned briefly, I, I do want to focus on front end prosecutor involvement in cases um, because I think that that leads to better results. I think that that leads to a safer Berkeley County, um, but also uh, we have a victim advocate in our office whose name is Cora Rutherford, uh, St. Cora, if you will. She is a person who, um, you know, as prosecutors, we're not social workers. And a lot of our cases involve victims, and victims are very important parts of our cases. We want to have a victim-centered approach to prosecution. Um, but with the dockets that we have and the fact that we're trained to practice law, not be victims advocates, it's great that we have Cora in the office to do that. Uh, the thing is, Cora does the work of about two or three people and somehow still does it with a smile on her face. I really don't know how she does. Uh, and I do want to focus um, in the future on, on getting Cora some help, some additional resources. Now, in Berkeley County, we're blessed enough to have Eastern Panhandle Empowerment Center, um, EPIC, and Katie Spriggs and them, you know, and Katie is wonderful. She's testified for me a bunch of times as an expert. Um, she's great and they provide a wonderful service but I think through the prosecutor's office I think we can divert a little bit more resources uh, to the victim advocacy program in our office I know speaking with Cora it's what it's June right now mm -hmm. she has had uh, I, I want to say about 1200 hearings this year that involve victims to where she is present at the hearing she has spoken with the victim and just just being there with the victim for a hearing I think she was in the neighborhood of 1,200 here. It's 200 a month. Yes. And over half of those are domestic violence cases. And um, I don't know if you saw, Katie and I were at the, uh, uh, Bill Elenfeld, the United States attorney, um, had a press conference about their initiative on trying to uh, come from the federal government side uh, and get involved in some domestic cases, domestic violence cases in, in the area and in Berkeley County. And uh, I, when we were there, Katie gave some of the numbers, and I unfortunately I don't have them off the top of my head, but they're they're astronomical. The domestic violence numbers that we deal with in Berkeley County, it is an issue, and they need a strong advocate. They need a prosecutor's office who's willing to work with them. And and if I'm carrying a file and running up to a courtroom, and I've got all these dockets, you know, it it can't be the prosecutors uh, that handle it. It's it's got to be a specialized person like Saint Cora, uh, and I would like to get her some get her some help. I know, I think Matt Harvey over in Jefferson even has some software that helps out with victim. Uh, uh, I remember reading an article, I need to talk to him about it, where, you know, it automatically sends updates to victims about upcoming court hearings and stuff like that to just take a little bit of, of that time requirement away from their victim advocates so they can spend more time one-on-one -on -one with the victims. Joe, going very quickly back to you as a candidate. Yes. You are from West Virginia yes and you got your uh, law degree from where West Virginia University yes West sir Virginia. and I went to undergrad at Marshall University I hope that doesn't lose yeah. me any votes um, and, and I'm originally from the from Wheeling West Virginia yeah. from the other panhandle um, which is why I'm a Pittsburgh sports fan which there, may there you go Joe lose me some <laughs> other <laughs> votes but I got a fist bump from you so we're no, okay. good, good baby you're solid <laughs> yeah. yeah you're talking Pirates about are in first place June 12 all is right with the world <laughs> everything is good you're talking about home confinement uh, yes. a couple minutes ago there's another component that I think Katie has been a real champion of and I assume you will as well and that is community service yes and the community service is one of the, the group you see alongside the road picking up trash that's them. and a host of other things as well Yes. And this program was not always held in vogue uh, prior to <laughs> Katie, but it is that's now, right. and so yes. it's done very well. Yes, all of those programs, and they work well together. And that's what, when I think about if there's another person that's, that's not me, that's the next prosecutor, I really believe that Berkeley County will be taking a step backwards. And I don't think we can afford that right now. We've been working, we've put together these teams of people who are working together to make our community safer. Uh, make things better uh, and provide services for the county and you know when when they have a question they call me when I have a question I call them we, we've built up this relationship on trust and you know being in the trenches together um, and mutual experience and I, I truly believe that if someone that is not me as the next prosecutor mm -hmm. you're gonna lose some of that now 
Go ahead, John. Sorry. The national news has been filled the last couple of years with the what I would call the dumbing down of prosecutorial powers or or perhaps selectivity in, in prosecutions. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we are not New York. We're not L.A. Right. Are those pressures, do those pressures exist here? Do you find in the prosecutor's office, is, is the pressure to look the other way beginning to grow? Um, no, it, it is, it's not. Um, not too much. I mean, you know, certainly um, it seems every time there's a Facebook post about a, a marijuana bust or something like that, there's a really big uproar on, on, um, on the social media from people thinking that we shouldn't prosecute marijuana at all. And, you know, the law itself when it comes to marijuana uh, for simple possession, you know, has become very lenient. And, and I don't know what the legislature will do over the years. I mean, I think there's clearly a trend uh, going toward decriminalization uh, in that way. But, um, you know, the laws are on the books and, and we're prosecuting them. But prosecution is never just black and white. There's always a gray. There's always what is justice and trying to find justice. And certainly trends in the law can factor into that. But, um, you know, laws on the books get prosecuted in this, in this county. Joe, the current Attorney General, Patrick Morrissey, who's going to be running for governor, obviously, he'll yes. be on the program tomorrow, uh, has made mention of the fact that the Attorney General has limited criminal jurisdiction yes. in West Virginia. There is one particular candidate who's running for Patrick's office who would like to change that yes. and give the Attorney General more criminal jurisdiction. Yes. Some county prosecutors have spoken against that publicly. Yes. What are your thoughts as a person who could be the next county prosecutor? Uh, I'm also against it. Uh, prosecutors, county prosecutors have fought long and hard to uh, keep Charleston out of our prosecutions. Um, and there's, you know, we live here, we work here, uh, and, and the prosecutor in a county is the chief law enforcement officer of the county. That's, that's how it works. That's what we are by statute um, and what Katie is now and what I intend to be. And having the attorney general's office interfere with that, I think would be detrimental, again, to our prosecution. So I, I would join with the other prosecutors around the state in opposing that. Uh, Joe, in regards to the safety of a county prosecutor yes. and the types of crimes that are committed in Berkeley County, uh, do you have any fear of the job of Berkeley County prosecuting attorney? You know, um, sometimes I, I worry about things and, you know, when you're prosecuting certain, you know, kind of gang violence type situations, you get worried. Uh, my wife used to laugh that I, if I was going through a trial, that was a big trial like that with some what I would call bad dudes, you know, that I I just hide guns all over my house and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. And, and, and I do worry about it some, um, but I have never had an issue of uh, anyone coming at me directly, personally, anything like that. I mean, I've got a lot of cameras around my house and security systems and everything like that, but um, I've never had to deal with that directly. Certainly not to the extent that our, our, our friends in law enforcement do, you know, I, I get up for work every day and I don't have any legitimate fear that I'm not going to come home to my wife and daughter. It's, I just don't, it's not a legitimate fear that I have, but it's a fear that uh, every friend and colleague that I have in uniform does have in the back of their minds. And um, while I make decisions of great consequence in my job, I don't have to make life and death decisions in an instant like they do. So I, I certainly respect our law enforcement officers and what they do because uh, I think they've got a lot tougher than I do. When you walked in, we could see your badge. Yes. An impressive looking badge, Thank I might you. add, too. Thank you. You do have a limited arrest power. <laughs> very, very limited arrest powers. Uh, we were given uh, by the legislature arrest powers in our office exclusively. Those are the only arrest. We can arrest someone in the office, and in my time, it has never happened. Um, but I do have a set of handcuffs in my office on the wall just in case. Did you bring him in? I did not. I'd like to see Stubblefield as an example for the <laughs> yes, community out there. Yes, yes. I tell you what, if you come visit me at the office and commit a misdemeanor in my presence. I'll never, I'll never be there, Joe. I'll never be there. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Kinzer has been our guest here on the program. He will be running for the office that will be vacated by the Berkeley County Prosecutor, Katie Wilkes Delegate. Joe, final thought. Uh, my final thought is uh, Katie is running for judge, um, and so she can't publicly uh, endorse me or talk about me or anything, and I, I respect that, but it doesn't stop me from talking about her. Uh, so I want to take a brief minute and tell you how 
heartbroken I am to be losing her, but how the community is going to benefit if she is elected as a judge. She's one of the smartest people I have ever met in my life. And people don't understand that about her. She is incredibly smart. And she has wonderful decision-making ability and the perfect temperament to be judge. I really look forward to that. And I guess when it comes to my race, what I want to say is, uh, I've mentioned it a couple times, but I'm, I am tough, I'm fair, I'm experienced, and if someone that is not me is the next prosecutor, I think Berkeley County is going to go backwards, and we just can't afford that right now. Well, your thoughts about Katie are appreciated, Joe. In fact, every at every level of where she's been, the people that I know that have been around her at those different parts of her life have raved about her competence and intelligence and yes. abilities. So you, you're not alone in that, for sure. Nope. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Joe, thanks for coming in. Thanks.